What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for another Lenovo Legion Go video, this time with the much anticipated VGA driver update or the GPU driver update. Now this carries with it a lot of the same issues and caveats that the beta driver was carrying with it and we'll talk about that throughout the video such as frame gen only working on the external monitor and Legion Space still needing an update for the monitoring of FPS to work. But let's get into it and take a look here at what's going on. So anyways, I saw this driver had hit the official support website and wanted to check it out. Now I checked Legion Space immediately. No update for Legion Space yet, which we really need. And in settings, if we go to drivers and we scan for that, we really just get the same old AMD chipset driver that doesn't want to go away in there. No new update for the GPU driver in here just yet, though I expect that to change any time. This is May 29th, 8 p.m. my time Eastern, checking all of this out and getting the video finished up. Now, if we go in and we check out the Lenovo uh, community form, which is handy here to check out updates and things from the members and all of that, there's nothing official from Lenovo yet either. They'll usually have a blog post up when everything starts to go live, but it's been a couple of days, two, three days since this driver dropped on the site and nothing yet except for some community members here. So that's an interesting one. We'll have to keep an eye out on that. For online support though, going to the support website and checking for drivers manually, this is where the GPU driver actually does show up for now. This was originally a December 25th driver all the way up until May 26th here. And now on May 27th, it changed with the updated driver here, uh, 1001 that we can download and install. So I did download and install this. I did it both just normally installing over top of the driver. I also did DDU to make sure there weren't any differences. And honestly, both ways worked fine for me and didn't really give me any problems as far as the install went. But like I said, we still carry the same problems as the beta driver, uh, portrait mode being picked up we're still not getting fluid motion frames unless we're docked and also no FPS monitoring from Legion Space still right now we need that fixed up so even with everything installing successfully and working with this driver that landed here um, that's still an issue it's nice to be updated but we still would like to see that be able to work even though I know it's the portrait display here now whenever you update your driver you also want to go into the Microsoft Store and update your AMD Radeon software that's gonna make sure you have the right version and all the features are working properly and all that kind of thing so we'll do that uh, everything worked out fine with that no problems again I did this multiple times to check it and clean installs and all that but yeah, on a restart here, go back into our software and we're going to be on April 22nd versus the older November driver that we were on from that December 25th official, not counting the beta that we had uh, for May in between that. But yeah, we'll go to home here and we are updated there. And we have the option to go into gaming and graphics and take a look at the frame gen as well. But like noted earlier in the video and in the beta blog from Lenovo, you can still only really use this on external monitors when docked. It still doesn't work with this portrait screen uh, here in handheld mode, which is disappointing to see. I really wish they could find a way to be able to get that to work to use frame gen driver level here in handheld mode. But one good thing here is Senua Saga doesn't crash on me anymore. And I've been able to get into that because that was certainly a problem on the other driver, as noted earlier in the video. Until we get a space update, the monitoring software is just not working through space. So I just use my MSI Afterburner or in-game stuff. But that would never show the frame gen even if it were working and only show base FPS. So I'll take a look at that real quick in a little bit as well. But yeah, at least this game wasn't crashing on me or breaking anymore. I'll show you an example here if you do try to turn on fluid motion frames while in uh, handheld mode here you'll see that you just get the incompatible pop-up that's going to happen doesn't really matter what you do with settings or games or any of that uh, if you're not hooked up to an external monitor uh, this is uh, what you're going to get for fluid motion frames right now. So this is kind of how it is, but it did fix my crashing issues with Senua Saga, and that's been great, so I'll be able to test that out here. I also played some other games, GOT being one, because I will be doing a, a, a video to compare performance to the past uh, GPU driver we had to this one, so that's something I'll be getting more into in another video. But here you'll see if we do go to that docked mode or to an external monitor here and I kick on frame gen, you see we uh, that stutter there, it comes on. Our base FPS goes from 70 to 50, which means we're probably 88 to 100 FPS for the game FPS. And that's our base there. So it does work when attached to an external monitor still just like the beta driver. But unfortunately, in handheld mode, we're not getting that here. 
Uh, performance is a little bit cleaner. We're definitely going to get into some comparisons. Like I said, I want to make a full video comparing five, six, or seven games. Uh, we can still use in-game frame gen, which works fantastic. And uh, Ghost of Tsushima here, this happens to be one of the best in-game frame gens, in my opinion, recently that we've gotten. It just works really well. It's pretty clean. There's always that little bit more input latency, but it does work pretty good. Now, a quick look at some comparison for GOT here uh, at the last driver that we were running versus the driver that were uh, the new driver we're running now from the website for May 27th here, the 1001. And compared to what I had tested before on GOT here, uh, it's similar in FPS, but you see a lot cleaner on our frame times and even on our lows, what we hit for our low FPS there, which is really nice to see. There are some improvements definitely here with this driver that I'm seeing. Of course, there are a lot more games to test. This is just one example, and I will be making a video getting much more into that and testing some past games and stuff like that um, but just overall taking a look at a few games as I've been playing the past couple days and taking a look at this one side by side uh, overall the performance in FPS is similar sometimes it's a little higher but it just doesn't dip as low and F and the frame times uh, just much better much cleaner overall and the game does feel better and I think I'll see similar in other games so I'm super excited to get in and test some other games and get some more side by side to that old driver versus the new and see if Lenovo gets us an update soon for space to fix their overlay and some things there but yeah overall i think so far there's some promising stuff here looking at this new driver and the frame times and performance i'm seeing in some games here uh, and we'll see what it looks like when we look at a lot more games but yeah for the most part i think this is going to be good i do wish we could get frame gen in handheld mode but i realized with the portrait screen this could be an issue but in-game frame gen works great so i wish they could do it at driver level for us uh anyways besides that that's pretty much what we're looking at so far for this update and uh, we'll take a look at more of a comparison of more games for this driver here soon as well all right guys thanks a lot for coming and check out the video as always i really appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one